You're listening to the Higher Calling Podcast. I'm your host, Pete Newsom, and I'm joined by Ricky Baez. And I almost forgot, Ricky, this is your source for all things hiring, staffing, and recruiting. How are you today? I am doing great, Pete. Ask me why I'm doing so ha- why I'm doing so great. Why, why, Ricky? Why today? Why today? Nah, because as soon as we're done with this, I'm gonna go to McDonald's. And um, I just found out over the weekend that McDonald's has Happy Meal for adults. And after I stopped laughing at that, thinking what a horrible idea, I'm like, I'm going to go today and I'm going to grab one for myself because I'm going to make today a happy day for me, Pete. You, you want is, in. <laughs> I, I, I definitely want in, right? I was making fun of it and quickly I switched to, I want one. So uh, I'm going to go get one adults. today. Does that mean you get a toy? Um, Actually, it does. <laughs> it really does. It's a weird looking toy. As soon as I get it, I'm going to send you a picture. We can put it on the website. It's going to be a complete waste of time. I look forward. Uh, <laughs> I look forward to that. Um, we we weren't able to record last week because of Hurricane Ian, which has been devastating to the state of Florida. Right. Anyone in the state? Uh, hard. I, I doubt there's anyone in the state who hasn't been affected either through friends or family. You and I were both fortunate. We we had some um, you know, some power loss, but and and some yeah you know, some cleanup to do, but. All things considered, extremely fortunate not to have uh, severe property damage like so many Floridians are dealing yep. with. And um, it's just been an awful, awful experience over the past few days in our state. It has. And, you know, it, it's uh, I, I lost my power for 20 hours and my patience for 120. <laughs> but that's that's nowhere near um, to the devastation that uh, people in the West Coast and South Florida um, are, are experiencing right now. So my, uh, m- my heart and thoughts go out to everybody over there as of right now, today, Tuesday, October, what is it, the 5th, the 4th? 4th. October 4th. Um, and we still do have um, rescuing efforts in some of, on Sanibel Island on the West Coast because the causeway was destroyed and no, nobody can get in or out via car. So they have to go via boat or um, either police, FEMA, or um, Coast Guard helicopters. So um, it, it's it, it, recovery efforts are still ongoing, and it's going to be a long time before that part of the state feels any kind of normalcy. Yep, it's uh, been an awful, awful thing. Um, yeah. But you know, life does go on and has to go on. And so here we are recording and sure. we're going to get back to business as best we can. And fortunately, all of our employees are are healthy and safe. And and there has been some property damage that's that, um, that some folks are dealing with. And that is really tough. Um, and they're taking that one day at a time. But uh, we have to get back uh, and and keep moving. Unfortunately, you know, there, there's a lot of craziness in the world that's just added to it, and um, you know, we're uh, we're 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 going to keep looking forward while you know, keeping our thoughts on the past as well. So, um, so today we are going to talk about what we expected to happen in 2022. So we're three quarters of the way through the year. Last uh, December, we published a blog that uh, were the staffing talked about the staffing trends we expected in 2022 so we thought it made sense to go through these and see how accurate we were in in our expectations so um so what do you think do you think we're going to find that uh uh what we thought was going to happen in in 2022 has actually happened i think we are pete i'm willing to i'm willing to guess that we are going to see some of these predictions were spot on right because you know especially you know Let's just dive in because that first one is going to really, really uh, drive this point home. Because, and by the way, for if if you want to find this, go to uh, the uh, fourcornerresources.com on the blog section. This was the 10 recruiting trends for 2022. It was published on December 6, 2021. And the very first one, Pete, is it's a candidate driven market. That was that, that's what was predicted um, in, in December. And to be honest, it really has been. That has come true. Recruiters, in, from, from my point of view, from my perspective, has had a hard time to really find that candidate, not because they're not out there, it's that there's just so many out there. And then there's so many to choose from, right? Yeah, it, it's been a candidate's market for a while. Uh, since we came on the other side of COVID, it, it has been throughout the year. I think it's slowing down. I, I think if we made that prediction right now for 2023, mm-hmm. I don't know that I would make the same prediction. Uh, I think we're seeing a lot of uh, conditions change in the market. The you know recession 
if we're in one, are we going to be in one? If we're not, that's a different discussion. Yeah. Inflation, war, yes, supply shortages. We've already seen layoffs in the tech space. So yes, absolutely. 2022 up until now has very much been a candidate driven market. I, we we want it to be that way, of yeah. course. That's good. Um, you know that that's a that that means there's lots of hiring. That means that companies are, are doing well and spending money and feeling confident about the future where they're adding to to their staff and to their headcount and you know, all of those good positive things. I'm afraid it's slowing down, and, and we're seeing that already. Too early to tell over the next three months what will what we would predict. I, I, if I was writing this blog right now. Uh, which we will. We need to write. We do this. Yeah. Update this for twenty uh, twenty three. Man, I wouldn't want to write it until the last day of the year, probably, because there's a lot of moving parts right now. And and a lot of organizations are getting creative in how in how they reorganize, right? Because a few months ago we saw Carvana, right? They 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 laid off about two thousand employees. Ford is laid it's it's laying some people off. Some tech spaces are laying people off. So you're starting to see that 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 hump. I don't know if you notice what Meta Facebook is doing. I don't know if 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 you saw what they were doing. They they are reorganizing. And base, you know, to be more efficient. And they, if they have some people who they don't need in that specific position, then they find positions for them somewhere else in the company and they have X amount of time to do it. If they don't, they get a severance package, but they're not calling it a layoff. They're not. How, how generous of them. And this, right. <laughs> and it's really interesting, right? Because I understand why they're not calling it a layoff because that's going to hit their, uh, their uh, stock prices. But I guess the reason I'm bringing that up is because. Now that market is going to be even more saturated with candidates, right? But we can't see that beacon how we used to see it before. And I'm wondering if that's going to be the trend for next year, how we're not able going to see that layoff or predicted. It's just going to be a saturated market and go from there, which is going to make it harder for recruiters to actually keep their finger on the pulse on 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 what kind of people are are out there looking for a job. So it's going to be really interesting next year. Yeah, I think there's a lot of room uh, for it to slow down and, and have us still be okay in the employment market. Yeah. Um, because there's been more jobs than there are uh, you know, skills to match those jobs for years. Yeah. Uh, you know, other than the brief period when COVID first started, since we came on the other side of um, of the real estate market, um, you know, tanking and, and everything that happened with mortgages, then in 2008, it's been a candidate's market. It, yep. And it's been stronger than ever over the past two years, I would say, right about two years now. Um, so I think there's room to pull back a little bit without it being too tough. I'm afraid we're going to go backwards <laughs> to more yeah. significant degree. Of course, I'm afraid of that. I mean, there's there's so many factors that could lead to it beyond our control, of course, as, as individuals. But um, hang on for the ride, I think, is is the best way I think of it for the next couple of months anyway. And I'm wondering real quick, I, it, I'm wondering what this is going to look like. Forget 2023. Let's take a look at 2024, because I'm willing to guess, Pete, that some of the recruiters, they're going to see in, in two years, they're going to they're going to see a radically different resume than what they're seeing right now, because more and more people, you know, going back to the great resignation, going back to quiet quitting, going back to quiet firing. There are some people who do go into the gig economy. Right. And they do that for a couple of years. And I'm wondering how that's going to show up in resumes in about two or three years. There's going to be a lot of time where it's corporate America, corporate America, uh, 1099 worker, corporate America, corporate America. So that's going to be coming up. So for recruiters, you might want to put that different hat on because you have to I don't want to say learn or just expect to see that kind of a different resume coming up in about 24 months. Well, I think it it's even I think you're right. I think it goes beyond recruiters where companies are going to have to decide how they manage their workforce or mm -hmm. their the work that they that they have to do. And as we've talked about recently a few times, the freelance economy that we're both fans of and and think is is in many ways the way of the future is growing. I saw a number yesterday and I, I'm not ready to talk about it in detail because I haven't seen all the the data behind it, but that that um, annualized uh, uh, revenue number in the gig economy is now 5.3 trillion. So Ooh. every time I see a new updated number, it continues to to grow, and um, it's it's very consistent with what we see and what we expect. So 
companies are first having to get over uh, you know employees being remote and dealing with that and and by the way coming um uh, on the other side of the storm there's been no i've never been happier to have our employees be remote because it has taken a huge um strain out, out, off away from a situation that's already strained right yeah. and and that is when when do we close what how, do we stay open do we close when this storm for those who followed it would know that it was expected to hit the Tampa Bay area and it ended up hitting um about I don't know what is it about 70 80 miles south it was about 80 there. miles south to Punta Gorda and, in uh, Fort Myers yeah and so it 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 absolutely destroyed that area but Tampa every, a lot of people left Tampa to go down there well not not a lot most people probably went somewhere else but the yeah. people in the south um southwest florida area didn't leave in the in the way that they would have because they didn't realize they had to so boats and and you know lack of preparation because they didn't expect it to hit there it, the point being you don't know where these storms are going to go and almost yeah. until they're on top of you and uh in years past with the business when we still were all in the office those it's a really challenging situation. Just like every school has to make a decision, every 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 company does too. When do we close? How do we handle it? What what's the right balance there? There's never a perfect answer. And uh, this year, with the fully virtual workforce, we were able to say, go where you need to go when you yeah. need to go. It's not even a consideration. It, and and you can you can still earn. You can still. Um, be productive and you can go somewhere safe without having to ever compromise your safety or sacrifice anything along the way. And we, you know, just basically had an open policy of do what you need to do when you need to That's do right. it and let everyone make their own individual decisions. And boy, what a, what a, what a nice thing that was. So companies already have to deal with, with that. And, and, and that's a struggle for a lot of organizations who, who, as we, as we know, right, we won't beat that horse today. But now they're going to have to deal with this freelance market yeah. e even more because whether you want it or not, it's here. It's here. And That's right. That, you know, your, your HR, I mean, HR folks like you, uh, you know, are, are going to be in high demand. I would expect to help companies navigate that because it does, you're not an employee anymore in that situation. That's going to be very different. Pete, I'm starting to see that now. I'm starting to see that now. So the beginning stages of it, the 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 appetizer per se, is is starting to happen right now. Uh, because I do have some clients asking me for some help with that because they are having a hard time bringing people in, and they're even having an even harder time keeping people on board because the same policies and procedures that motivated people three four years ago are not necessarily the ones that are motivating pe motivating people today. Right. So we just got to keep a finger on that pulse from a re pre proactive perspective instead of waiting for something to happen. And then you're behind the gun. So mo let's move on to number two. Yes, uh, sir. Or, we're, or this is going to be a 24 hour uh, long <laughs> podcast. Is this right? right. Uh, so the, the second was that the quality of candidates um, is, you know, is going to be more important than ever. And what we what we meant by that is that um, with with knowing that candidates are going to have multiple opportunities knowing how many jobs there are and that candidates have a greater tendency to disappear um, and, and change your mind and, or have something else come up. The, the, the depth of qualification, which is always necessary and, and, and something you should take very seriously was, has been more important than ever to make sure that the candidates really want the job, right? <laughs> that, yeah. Because if it's not a job that they're really committed to, they're going to bail. So that's what we expected to happen. Do you think that's that's proven to be um, to be accurate? Absolutely, I think so as well. And and how people can take notice of that, I'm assuming my people organizations is take a look at your 30 day turnover. If you have a relatively high 30 day turnover, that means something happened with the hiring process because that that in 30 days, if somebody says, you know what, this isn't for me, I'm just going to go somewhere else then yeah, obviously that's going to be an issue. So, so from, from a recruiting perspective, from a recruiter perspective, you you have a lot to choose from. So now you have to be even more laser focused on the skill sets that the organization is going to need, not from right now to six months, but what that's going to look like a year, two years, five years from now, because you want to make sure that you communicate that as well. So this is more on the organization because the organization has to tell the story on who they are, what they stand for, what they believe in. That way you can really touch the heartstrings of the of, of the right candidates that you're looking for. 
and that quality that they have to keep them engaged, not just for 30 days, but for two or three years down the road to get a really good return on investment. So I think this one definitely has come true for 2022. Uh, absolutely. Okay. okay. Next one. It's or more organizations. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Will adopt diversity hiring goals. Yes. Diversity so, hiring goals. That's right. That's right. And this is going to be more on tap than, than, than ever before, because look, if it's, I'm going to go to local government real quick, right? Because local government normally recruits from the community, right? They hardly ever recruit from anywhere outside of the community, unless it's a high profile position, like an executive or a fire chief or something like that. So if the, if, if the recruiting structure, if the recruiting strategy is calibrated the way it's supposed to be and then you're supposed to recruit the same type of demographic from the recruiting pool from the talent pool right but sometimes there's some gaps there so now that we have such a candidate driven market this is a perfect opportunity for organizations to really take a look at where they're investing the recruiting dollars and what communities which communities which is for those of you in hr who have um who work for organizations that has government contracts you know this is part of the aap rules the 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 affirmative action plans which by the way they're not quotas it's just a strategy I tell my students that all the times, AAPs are not quotas, they're just a strategy. And this is a great opportunity for organizations to take advantage of that and stretch out their, their marketing dollars. So yeah, I think this one this year, more than ever, next year, even higher. I'm, gonna, I'm willing to bet that right now. So this is one that I, um, you know, it's at times controversial. It, it's, it's one that I, I, have a couple of different thoughts on and one of mm -hmm. which is should it be necessary you know if if you are if you're hiring for the best candidate if you're hiring for the candidate who is most qualified who's the best fit for the role whatever that role might be right whether it's um you know a professional basketball you know center who <laughs> you know who has to be you know or uh, you know, taller than everyone else or um you know an accountant should you consider um, you know, your diversity and your hiring, even if it means not hiring the most qualified candidate for that particular role? No, because to me, that you're, you're, you're running dangerously close to a quota, right? Because then what you're saying is, all right, we got somebody who's qualified, but then we're trying to hit this goal. We're going to bypass the qualification over the goal. Now you're in trouble. Right. So the way I'm looking at it is, is not necessarily have that structure for the quarter towards the end, but let's figure out where you're investing your marketing dollars in. Because if you're investing your marketing dollars from a recruiting perspective, if you're investing your marketing dollars in an area that brings a specific demographic, but not in another one, then you might want to spread that wealth around. Now, once you do that and nobody applies, nothing you can do. Right. Because you still got to focus on the qualifications. Right. But if you're able to show that, look, I've 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 had a job fair in this community, a job fair in that community, and I gave out candy. I did all these things and people and nobody showed up to to interview. What more can you do? So I want to make sure that everybody that's listening right now is, yes, this is something that's really big right now. And it's going to be big later, bigger later on. But let's focus on where you're holding these events and, and, and where your marketing dollars are being spent to make sure that you give the right opportunity to every neighborhood or every community in your area to make sure you've got the most diverse plan possible, which it's, 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 I don't think it's going to happen because it depends on the, on the candidate and what he or she would like to apply for. Yeah, I think it, you, it seems like you associated that answer with the socioeconomic um, you know, hiring, but what yes. about things like gender, uh, where ah. I, you know, I will tell you that my company has never had, uh, any kind of policy around that and has never needed to in terms of the diversity of our hiring, because it just naturally falls in line with, um, I think the makeup of, of our community as a whole, um, yeah. the industry as a whole. And I pay attention to what our, our numbers are by, by race and gender, mm -hmm. but um, we've never needed to, to do anything special. And um, I, I, 
I wonder at times when companies do, is, is there like, are they addressing a problem versus, you know, avoiding one in the first place? I, I feel like mm. we've never had a problem in that area. Um, and our numbers indicate that that's true, as you, as you know. Uh, but companies that need to go out of their way, is it because they were doing something wrong um, initially and they're trying to correct it? Or are they doing it for show in some cases more so than anything else? I know some companies that do it reactively because something did happen. And after a long investigation or a lawsuit, they kind of have to. And then some companies do it proactively. Right. From the gender perspective, I don't know. I just you know that I don't know how from a recruiting perspective, and I'm just I'm just pulling this out right now, I don't know how we would create a marketing plan to hire that specific uh, a, a type of candidate. But the policies that we have are important, right? Because if somebody comes in and they say, hey, I want to be addressed like this instead of that, right? Um, then yeah, as we have to be understanding with that. Um, and, and, and I completely understand that. So from a diversity and inclusive perspective, yeah, this organization does, and a, and a lot of organizations should. Um, but I just don't know how what that would look like from a recruiting marketing perspective. I'm going to have to do some more research on that, and that would be interesting for 2023. Okay, well, uh, yeah. we'll, we'll keep paying attention to that uh, for That's sure. Right. right. So number four, increase investment in social media, employee referral programs, and oh, job God, boards. Yes. 100%, right? No question. 100%. Man, TikTok, uh, Google reviews are crucial right now. Um, it's just, just anything in social media, any organization who does not have uh, uh, the, the social media tools in their marketing plan, I, they're just not going to get anybody. It's just not going to work, right? I don't think, I think that's been the case for the past five years, right? Not just for 2022 and beyond. Yeah, well, I think it's it's even more so. Uh, I can tell you that the the world of um, having a digital presence is is in, has increased. I think is continuing to increase, and, I, and to me, that's what it is as much as anything else. Um, all of these are tools that allow um, you to be more successful when hiring, and and in a in a candidate driven market. So it sort of goes hand in hand. Yeah. To me, I think. If the market shifts, we hope it doesn't. But if it does, and and we have um, you know a recession into a serious recession, I guess they're all serious, but a severe one, right? That um, then we may see that pull back a little bit. Well, you know, companies won't spend money on on these things if they feel like it's easier to hire. Mm -hmm. uh, but right now, I don't know any organization who th thinks it's been easier to hire over the last two years. No, yeah, me either. So, absolutely. So it's everything from TikTok to Facebook, Instagram. They they have been crucial, a crucial tool in a uh, in in a recruitment strategies toolbox. So I don't know of any organization that doesn't do it, and I don't think that's going to change anytime soon. That's only going to get more and more provocative. Absolutely. Yeah. All, right, All right, number five: competition and persistent skill shortages pose an ongoing challenge. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, yes. You know, in in some areas more than others, but the more um, refined and specialized skill set, the the harder it is to find people in those roles. And so, uh, specialization to me is is you know, if I'm giving advice to anyone who is early in their career, um, I think you know, that is it, it does. There's so many areas you can specialize as in from skilled trades to um, you know to technical skills to financial mm -hmm. skills to healthcare. Find something that you really want to do and specialize in it because you will be sought after very highly. And that's that's what we expected. And that's exactly what's come true. And this is something that I have seen here at Four Corner Resource. Actually, this happened a few months ago where this is this is the value of having a, state, a, a staffing agency on your side as an organization, because that value is that you have recruiters that really pay attention. And I mean, really pay attention to what the client needs, right? Even what the client verbalizes and what they don't verbalize. Because then when the client says, I'm looking for a candidate that has A, B, and C, right? And then the, the, the recruiter pays attention to that. They find a candidate that may not have A, B, and C, but because they take a deep dive into the profile, wants to build a profile for that candidate, they find out, wait a minute, this skill set can equal this. That skill set can equal that. I've seen two situations here. I think it's a few months ago where one of our recruiters was able to sell a candidate skill set to a client where the client 
wasn't really aware that's a skill set that they needed. And it turned out to be one of the best hires that they have. So that's why this one is crucial. It's even better to have a staffing agency on your side where you got recruiters who really care about what the client is looking for, that they really find all those not, not easy to find skill set from the uh, from the candidate and make that connection. So this one is big because, and it's important because there's so many people out there, so candidate driven market is really easy for a candidate to say the right things and then maybe slip through the cracks when they really don't have the skill set. That's where it's crucial to have a recruiter who knows how to take a deep dive into the profile to make sure you make a good connection for the client. Absolutely, great points. All right, number Thanks. six. Remote recruiting will remain popular. Well, <laughs> we talked about that earlier. <laughs> Needless to say, remote everything is, right. is going to remain popular. You know, I remember it. it of course, I remember it, it. It was a policy I put in place when I first started um, Four Corner, it, which is that we had every candidate. It uh, not only were we working in the office, we had every candidate come in the office to meet us. We would mm. not submit a candidate unless they physically came into our office. And that was 17 years ago, 18 years ago. Now, what a, what a different world. You know, imagine trying to do that now. You would be laughed out. I remember <laughs> you know, a, a, a guy that um, uh, was a consultant we worked with back in, I don't know, this is around 2010. He was from California and he could not believe we were still um, – we still had this requirement back then where every candidate would come in the office where we just didn't feel comfortable submitting them. And um, he couldn't believe it. He goes, I can't believe can't, they'll actually do that. And I've, because in California already that had been, you know, that was like not even a, on the radar. And I, I, I think back to the, that time and those conversations and think how many, how many candidates did we miss out on because of it? But I'll tell you this, we, um, we always had you know, super high quality. That was one of the things yeah. our reputation's built on because we took that extra step. So I don't regret doing it, but it does seem like a distant memory um, in terms of what, what would be practical today. I'll tell you what, Pete, you know, it, it, it's um, compared to 10, 20 years ago, obviously a completely different world, uh, right? 17 years ago, you candidates had to come in. We had to meet, which I understood why that was necessary, right? Because it's a big difference than this. There's a different connection when you meet somebody in person. Today, remote recruiting will remain popular and it's going to remain popular. And I'm, I'm even venturing to guess in 10 years, it's going to be radically different than what it is today. I guarantee, mark my words, let's mark this at uh, on, on Tuesday, October 4th, right? 2022, Ricky said this. In 10 years, we're going to be having job fairs in the metaverse. I guarantee it, Pete. Everybody's going to have one of those goggles and we're going to be meeting everybody virtually. It's going to be a recreation of a job fair. And it's going to be in the metaverse. So um, let's uh, keep doing this show every week for 10 years. And then let's revisit this. <laughs> I, think you're, then... I think you're probably right. And I think that's really weird. And I think that um, it's it's not a great thing for society. So I mean, it, it's it's was that movie Wally? Wally, yeah, it's coming yeah. true. It's coming yeah. true. That and uh, Ready Player One, that one. I saw that and it scared me. I'm like, yeah, that, 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 that's us in five years. So that's going to happen. We just got to be ready for it. Well, if you think about it, you don't have to leave your house to get food. Or eat. I mean, everything's delivered to you. You don't have to leave your house to work anymore. Um, you know, that's not how humanity evolved. And I, while these conveniences, and I'm I'm a huge fan I mean, here, you know, this is hypocritical to some degree. I'm working at home now and, and I love it. Um, I think it's great for our employees, selfishly or self-servingly. I think it's great for me. Um, but when I think of you know, generations to come, I, I, I think, gosh, you know, how, how, that's going to be very limiting in terms of how everyone evolves. And so while we're taking full advantage of what technology allows us to do today and the convenience and comfort that comes with it, I think there's going to be some downside that we don't yet know what it's going to look like. I mean, Pete, I'm going to be really, really personal with you right now. I haven't worn socks in three weeks, right? Because I'm working from home. I wear flip-flops all the time. And whenever I meet somebody, I got flip-flops on. So it's, uh, it's, it's, a, it's a very different time. And, and I think it's going to be even more different as time progresses because here's what's happening, Pete. You know, people like you and me, we remember a time before the internet. We remember, we remember a time before social media. 
you got people in the workforce right now that are coming into it right now that they 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 remember social media, Facebook from the time they were born. So they they never known a time without social media. So these are the folks who are going to make decisions for the business world now for in and in the future. So that's what I'm saying. It's it's going to get even more technical because of the type of decision makers that are going to be in charge in about 10, 20 years, because that's all that they've known. So yep. we, we we might as well be ready for it. Understood. Yeah. And, and, and it's, it's, well, like you said, 10 years from now, we'll, we'll check back to this day and, and see, <laughs> right. see what happened. Um, more candidates express interest in mental health benefits. That's number seven. I, I, I think we've seen that to be unfortunately necessary. Yep. Um, and even, even this morning on, on our, you know, we had a team call and, and talked for a few minutes about the need to reach out, um, for support and, and help if, if need be, it's, it's, it's a strange, still a strange place for me to go, you know, just, just mm -hmm. like, you know, as I say, I'm, you know, I'm, when I think of things like putting in diversity hiring, um, in, in place, I think, gosh, what, why should that be necessary? Just do the right thing. You know, be, 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 be like, don't discriminate on anything like that shouldn't, it shouldn't be necessary to say, right. Or to do. And that's how I've always tried to operate. And that's why we don't have a policy like that in place. Yep. Similarly, um, I, I, I think it should be a given that if you need help emotionally, mentally, then you should you should have a, a place to 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 go uh, or or someone to ask you should be able to talk about it and the help should be there and the support should be there, but I also realize in these areas that um, that's probably a little naive to just take things for granted, and um, and so I get it too and and see the the value of having these programs in in place um, and unfortunately like I said. The isolation that's come, the 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 the, the anxiety and worry that 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 has been forced upon us all, um, man, it's it's caused some 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 you know mental health damage. That's for sure. Well, Pete, this this is one that's near and dear to my heart. And for the past five six years, I've been pushing mental health benefits and for not not pushing it because every organization, if you have benefits, you have an EAP, the Employee Assistance Program, which yep. it's it does provide some some mental health benefits. I've been trying my hardest to make it more normal for people to ask for help. Because the reason this is not such a popular program is because there's a stigma behind it, right? They don't want to call EAP. They don't want to use the mental health benefits because they don't want to be, they don't want to be labeled as somebody who's it's, I hate to say this, but this is what people are afraid of crazy. And, and, and that's not the, that's not the fact at all, right? There are things that people go through, especially through, through this last pandemic, right? So someone like me, I got to tell you, I'm an extrovert, Pete. And if you put me in an office, not talk to anybody, don't do anything, I'm go I'm I'm gonna go insane. So um, in, in the past ten years, I've had to to use this, and I, I've I'm not afraid to say it because, th again, there is a stigma, and I want to normalize when people need help, please ask, please ask. There's always a benefit there where where um where. There's always a benefit there where employees could take advantage of that. It could really help them. And from, and from business leaders and HR professionals, this is something that's really big right now. And it's going to get even bigger later on. The best thing you can do is to promote the benefits you have and make it okay for somebody to ask help when they don't get labeled. So that's the best thing we can do as leaders. Yeah. So candidates have, um, you, this is, this has become increasingly important as a benefit. We both agree it's going to continue that way. And yeah, it's, it's, it is, I think it's good that it, it's become so much more normalized to talk about. Um, I, I think, you know, almost on a weekly basis, I hear someone in my personal life mentioned, you know, going, you know, talking to their therapist about something yeah. or other. I, I don't, I, I don't do that only because my, if I had a therapist, they'd quit, they'd leave the profession. I don't think they would do <laughs> I don't think they could handle what I would share. Um, but, uh, um, but it, it has become, you know, normalized and unfortunately more necessary because, because of all the external factors that are going on. So, um, yeah, that this one's going to stay around, um, yeah. for a while and unnecessarily, but rightfully so, or unfortunately, but rightfully so.
That's right. So rec- recruiters find new ways to use AI. That that's number eight. So mm-hmm. let me just say first on that. I I I what we call AI is not really AI. It, it's it's an, it's effectively an if then statement that that mm-hmm. it's promoted and and um, advertised as AI. So yes, recruiters are continuing to try to find ways to increase efficiency and 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 leverage automation and their process um, and companies out there are continuing to tout AI. So that that is it's a trend and we're trying to all figure out a way to you know have, build a better mousetrap, right? I mean that's yeah. that's a given. Um I don't see that going away anytime soon. No, it's not. So here's I want to be clear with this one because this is this is getting it evolves every year, every single year, it gets better and better. I don't think I've ever shared this story with you, Pete, about five years ago. Um, I just said, you know, let me test the waters. Let me interview out there. And I started interviewing and um, I started chatting with this one recruiter online about my, my, my qualifications. Let's go ahead and, and schedule something. Anyway, I had a really good conversation with this recruiter to find out later on after the uh, interview was scheduled, it was a, it was a chat bot. I was talking to Pete. It scared me. I had a good. I wanted to friend him on 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 LinkedIn. <laughs> I mean, that's how that's how that's how a personal that conversation happened, and that was five years ago, right? But even then, honestly, Pete, it, it's it's nothing's going to be the that human connection. That human connection still needs to be there, but this should be used has been used and is going to continue to be used as a tool to assist recruiters. So yeah, this is only going to get even more, more evolved as time goes on. And look, if you haven't seen Terminator, just don't go too crazy with it because Skynet will go active and then we're all in trouble. And I don't want to, I don't want it to blame HR for that. Well, they, right? they, I don't want another Terminator movie and blame HR for that. Well, did, did you see it just a few days ago that uh, Elon Musk you know, announced it was a new Tesla robot? Did you <laughs> no. I, I haven't looked into do it much yet, but uh, I mean, I mean, about time, right? Hasn't people think he's a robot? So what is it? His kid or something? You know what? <laughs> as, a, as a as a Tesla owner, I would say Elon probably should focus on the service component of the company a little, mm-hmm. a little better these days. Ah. And, and let's 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 just leave it at that. <laughs> Someone's getting a well written letter for customer support. You can't even get a hold of a live person. It's a whole different. Uh, yeah, what, oh. what what has made you know those um you know, I'm I'm a second time Tesla owner and um man it, it's um you know service is interesting. I'll I'll just say that. Okay. So anyone listening who who has a Tesla right now probably knows what I'm talking about and I'll I'll leave it there. <laughs> yeah. So. Well, I don't know who's listening, your Tesla right now from the garage. It's sending an email right now for you. It hears right. everything. Well, <laughs> well, Ricky, it's not in my garage, it's in the shop. So in there the, you go. Uh, <laughs> so, I got it. Got it. Um, for Enough the, said. For the third time in six months that I've had. Oh it. Anyway, uh, so we'll 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 move past that one. Yeah. But yes, um, oh. artificial intelligence and in, in whatever that that form is today is going. It's 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 going to continue to um, um, you know, to to grow. That's right. Reaching passive candidates is more important than ever. That's number nine. So that that's 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 a layup, I think, because. It, yeah, when when there's such a shortage of of qualified candidates for any uh, individual role, you have to go to the folks who are who aren't looking, and and that's something a good recruiter does anyway. But it's an absolute necessity uh, these days, and has been for a while. This is something that the out of Pete out of all of them, this is the one that is the big has the biggest light on it, the biggest spotlight because this one is crucial right now. Because you have to start looking for candidates before the candidates need a job. You've got to start building relationship with these folks before they need your services. Because what's going to happen is when they start to need your service, there's so many recruiters out there, right? Everybody's trying to pitch and they're going to go to whoever they have a relationship with. And this is something we we drive to our to our recruiters in our organization on a weekly basis. Start reaching out on LinkedIn, start building these relationships, see what you can do for them to make, you know, to just make that connection. That way, when they need some help, there's only one person they're calling, that's you as as that recruiter so this one right here because you know i'm big on building relationships and that's exactly what this is this one is not going to go away anytime soon especially with ai 
and especially all this technology stuff happening out there, always evolving, it is crucial to build those relationships for people who don't need a job right now. That was easier to place them later on. Yeah, it's it's that's such a great point. And it's easy to say, really difficult to execute yep. uh, because you have to think beyond today. And in a in a just in time world, which is the one we, we live in, it um, it it's in, it's a incredibly difficult to do and it, unless you have a um, you, know, you look further in the future but that's the way that that's its own show that's how recruiting mm-hmm. should be done that's how a uh, relationship should be built and so I'm glad you made that point um but yeah if you're if you're reaching out to someone um only when they can do something for you at that particular moment it's not doing it right um and uh and you should always you should always be thinking ahead uh, as we a, do that here all the time and it works it yep. works beautifully. And you can tell, just look us up on our Google reviews, right? It, it, it's, you got five stars and you got all these business names out there that I thought was, <laughs> mis- I'm sorry. You what? <laughs> Earlier, we oh, talked yes, about that one yes. name. Yeah. With the, <laughs> with, with the misspell, which by the way, I Googled it and it says it, it's, it's the right spelling. Anyway, uh, yeah. inside joke, inside joke. <laughs> all right. <laughs> so, so last right, that one, was, number, number 10. Ooh, larger focus on retention. Yes. Folks. Pete, I'm sorry. I'm going to, I'm going to hop in a soapbox strong enough to hold me. Um, so this is the one that I, it, 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 I get knee deep on because one of the things and this, I make sure all of my students are aware of this, right? We put so much an emphasis, such a big emphasis on recruiting, on telling our story, on making sure that when, when we convince somebody, we sell the idea for coming to work for this organization, that that's the best decision you could possibly make for your career. We do that, and what a lot of organizations do is once they come on board, we forget about them. We forget about them, and we don't pay any attention to them. Folks, let me tell you this right now. You've got to have the same energy. You've got to have the same drive to continuing to educate the people that come to your organization and help them grow to whatever their career aspirations is with the same veracity, the same energy you had in recruiting them. You cannot let that drop because what's going to happen is you spend so much time and effort to bring them in. And if they leave you within 30 days without bringing you any kind of return on investment, you just wasted your time and money. And you want to make sure that you keep focusing on that retention piece to make sure that the time, money, and effort spent in bringing them on board doesn't go to the wayside. So this was a big one for me. I don't think I could add anything to that. I think, I think you said it, you said it really well. There has been a larger focus on that for all the reasons we've talked about. And, um, We'll see. I mean, as we go forward, it, it, you know, kind of to wrap wrap up this this show is in in with this this last point. Um, these layoffs are, are are continuing. I just had another alert um, uh, while we've been on that there's there's another company just announced is announcing. So, oh. I, it, you know, this is this is a tough time um, uh, or an interesting time. Hopefully, it won't become a tough time, but it might. Um, so the, that focus on retention, I don't know that that'll be a prediction in 2023, mm-hmm. uh, but it, it 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 should always be top of mind for an organization, no question about it. So um, so Ricky, it sounds like for the most part, all ten of these things that we said would happen actually happened. So um, how, how about that? Good for us. So um, I need you to send me six numbers, six lucky numbers. Um, that, don't worry, you'll get ten percent. All right. And we'll, you know, we'll go to a Bitcoin conference together and hang out. Uh, but I need you to give me a six, you know, six numbers for the lotto, man, because uh, these were spot on. And I. All right. So let me ask you. I know you said some of these that you don't know about 2023, but let's let's make believe it's December right now. Which one of these do you think would not make it to 2023? Um, I don't know of any. Well, I, th- I think the uh, I think the number one, I, I don't I don't. Right now, if I had to bet, mm-hmm. so we'll see if, if this is accurate. You know, let's uh-huh. visit this in a couple months. I don't think it's going to remain a candidate-driven um, market to the degree that it has been. Now, the exception to that, even in you know um, in two thousand eight, when things were really bad, those with specialized skills in 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 very um, that are very in very high demand, they're always going to be um, they're always, there's always going to be a good market for for those folks. Mm-hmm. But as I, I don't know. I, I, I look, I have to be um, conscious of of what's happening and what the risks are. 
as a business owner. Uh, but I'm, I, I want to be optimistic, but, uh, but I tend to, to look at it and think, okay, what's the worst case, worst likely scenario. And I think the external factors that are, that are happening in the economy um, and around the globe right now are, I don't know what they mean. I, I there's a lot of signs that are, that are, that are a little scary. So, yeah. So I think you're right there. Yeah. I, it, I want to be, I want to be, uh, very wrong in thinking that things are going to get um, you know, worse for for a while, but uh, but we'll see, right? If you if you plan for the worst and and you hope and expect the the you know, the best that, that can that can happen, then you're pleasantly surprised. So that's how I'm. But, it, but what about you? Do you have any one one of these that you think we would not you know to be won't be predicting three months from now? I think I think you're right about number one. Number one, which is the uh, the candidate driven market. I think with the way things are going right now. Um, it's slowly turning that tide, right? But that doesn't mean that recruit. That just means that recruiters cannot forget of the skill set that they're still looking for, right? Because what happens is when it's the other way around, right? Uh, yeah, when it's the other way around, then everything is so scarce. And I don't know. Do you become? Do you drop your standards? I guess those are some things that that sometimes happen. We just got to be careful that when it does turn around, you don't change your standards just because it's going to be harder. You really want to maintain the standards there and just keep them there because if you don't, it really is going to affect your business. So yep. that one, I think is going to change. You're hundred percent right. The other ones are going to stay there. I think, man, to be honest, I think so, so we'll too. do it again in December. See what happens. Yes, we will. I love yeah. it. All right. Excellent. Well, thank you. And, and thank you for listening today. We look forward to uh, being held accountable for anything we predicted going forward. We'll, we'll, we'll continue to revisit and, um, and drive safe out there. Have a good one, folks. And remember, if you want uh, a topic for the show, hire calling at fourcornerresources.com and go to your favorite podcast platform. Download us. Give us a like. Let us know what you think and let us know. Pretty soon we're going to be doing another Q&A. Q&A. We're due. All right. Thanks so much. Have a good one. Thank you.